I think within uh, an hour of finishing the script, I said, let's go, let's do it. And the last time I felt that way about a script was on War Games and on uh, Saturday Night Fever. You know, a real strong, positive feeling about the material. Well, that's very good for me because that allows me to bring a lot of enthusiasm to it and excitement. We've designed a robot that is way beyond the state of the art of current robotics. It will be decades before you could really have a robot that could do what we're saying this robot does. Our robot, he's actually going to have to be able to perform. It's not going to just be a matter of uh, pushing some buttons and having a kind of an arm move into position. It'll actually have to be able to perform, and I think that's what will make it real special. The robot's designed to be a foot soldier a robotic substitute for a foot soldier. And in our story, if the people who made it are successful, they'll build several million of them, or several hundred thousand, to substitute for uh, foot soldiers. And so we had to have something that would answer those kind of design requirements, something that would be able to get over all kinds of terrain, that would be able to deal with a lot of the things that a foot soldier has to deal with. I think we need to round these corners off, too. Okay. So it doesn't quite look like such a such rectangular square. Right. And this might have some good bite on it, but right now it looks like a little bit what it is. Right. And to get some more of the naturalness like the tires have that, that mm -hmm. you have will be great. Okay. All right. Well, I'll make a note of that. Yet at the same time, you want to have a certain kind of anthropomorphic look, looking like man, in a way that uh, that makes sense from a robotic standpoint. What do we got in here, the hand? The hand. All right. Uh, now we had this looks good. good. How you doing, Rick? Good, how you doing? OK. Last time we had met, we had talked about the fact that the fingers were a bit wide. So this will be able to delicately pick things up off of a bench. And then he'll be able to turn them around and examine them. Uh, and as well, We'd be able to adjust the hands so that the hands come by like this, so he could grab around like a pole, for instance. Yeah, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well as he'll be able to actually just get his fingers out of the way, yeah. open his whole hand up, and that's like the industrial strength gripper that could just crush tubing or crush, yeah. crush like metal. Yeah, right in here, right. Like, like that. That could really hurt you there. Okay. Now, this is the wrist actuator. Correct. This does the same thing as the wrist. And then it also turns. So the hand will actually connect right on the end of this and then be activated like so. Switch back and forth. And, right, and then it'll have roll as well. Like that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, the action is real nice. Right, the real fluid. And when you compound that with the subtle finger movement, you know, it'll be like a real. You can back in and do all kinds of hands. Uh huh. So this is the shoulder and the upper body yeah. part here. This is the shoulder part here. Correct. Okay. How's this going to work now? Okay. We just got this actuator mounted in here, and this is going to go up and down like so. Oh, that's great. That really works great. This has a lot of torque, doesn't it? No, yeah, it does. Actually, this actuator has 150 pounds of push or pull. Yeah. And about with our mechanical disadvantage, we have like 50 pounds. Yeah, that's real strong. Quite a bit more uh, potential than we're anticipating needing. What we see so far is the possibilities for personality. Until we really get into it and start to move it and operate it uh, and have it go around, that's when we'll see the personality come out. And that'll be an exciting day to see what will happen. There will be a lot of things, I bet, that will happen that we don't expect. We didn't realize that it would tilt its head in a certain way or do certain things that will be very cute. This is really critical to work because the whole personality of the robot is is in this area. And and so we want to get this to get as much personality so we can we can get a little bit of eyebrow lift or something like this and mm -hmm. we'll hopefully see how how it works and he can get we can get some surprise or shock or whatever he does uh, in here. You know, trying to make this thing react like a human being is real tough. Um, 
it's going to be interesting to see what happens when we get the puppeteer working with it and and really make him come alive because I think there's a big difference you know with us sitting looking at at this mock-up and and how the uh, how he's going to come alive so we can get a good you know mean sort of Darth Vader look like this and then uh, and then it's kind of surprise or some kind of questioning look well that'll be good to see how that works it, you know 90 percent of the personality is in the head right here Look out. Watch out. Ah. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. All isn't failed. Give it a shot, Eric. All right. <laughs> Nothing stops him, okay? <laughs> That's incredible. Number five is a strange combination of, uh, of special effects and robotics and all kinds of techniques. And number five is going to be a person. I mean, he will be a character that, that you'll fall in love with. The main thing in a film is if you really like the character and care what that character wants, the main character, you're probably going to like the film. You know, if you get involved in what uh, number five wants in the film, and in this case is to be alive, to be considered alive, be recognized as alive, and you like this, this character, then th that's half the battle right there. This could really do very well. I mean, this has tremendous appeal.